It is an expression of youth wanting to make an impact on the world and change the world. Prophet Ibrahim was, he could read exactly the heart's intention. So he said, oh, he said cut the snack, pierce the other fellows. Eventually, he could not anymore do anything. So he asked God, so what happened? The voice tells him, said, look, this world is the turning point, is the work in progress situation. You know, you're killing everybody because they are not complete or they are not full or they are not real or they are not honest. We have to recreate another world because this, nothing, this is needed. So it is the youthful zealousness that I'm going to change the world. Everybody has to wake up. Everybody has to be, you know, God-inclined prophets. It is zealous. That's, it's all right. But if it doesn't stop soon, you become a danger. You become a fascist. A Muslim, fa you know, whatever fascist. I want to share everybody. Not your business. Your business is to be revolutionary within yourself. And evolutionary with everything else. Give them time. What is 5,000 years? Really, wait 5,000 years. It's all right. All will be fine. Yeah. But no, every minute. Every minute. And have no watch. Really. And, or cell phone. Please leave your watches and cell phones. Yeah. Somebody should open a shop with them all. <laughs> These are tools for survival. They are hindrances for arrival. So you are still in a survival mood and mode. So this, how long will I this? Doctor, can I stay another two years? You're already you know, in a coma. You want to be prolong the coma? What? You're already underwater. That's why these religious or pious people, when they compete, is you know, one of the ugliest sights, you know, whatever. Because if it is something visible, Productive. Say, look, I can make better than you. I can make the window or the door or whatever. But no, don't you know I am higher? I have studied more in more whatever seminaries. The zone of humanity, more is more. The zone of spirituality, less is more. Knowledges are the same, two. One is to do with humanity. The more you know, the more you know. But when it comes to spirituality or divinity, there is no such thing. It's total abandonment and trust in the moment as the Quran describes the Prophet Nuh. He says, my Lord knows what I need. And if I am ill, he will give me healing. And, 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 and. and next life also, in the hereafter, I trust he will forgive me. So that's it. Then you are a full human being. Then your efficiency will develop to have grace with it. Barakah is real, you know. To have an X factor. Food appears to be more. Or whatever, because they are satiated in a slightly different way. You know, you are in this world, not of this world. But do remember these two zones always, and you straddle them. You are within humanity only to reflect upon and be at one with divinity. So you have a purpose. You have to experience it and be it and live it. When that is done, all is done. If that is not done, you may as well not have done anything. No matter how much piety, how much goodness, how much kindness, how much... They are fine. It's, it saved you from yourself to volunteer, to go to a poor city and just serve. You save yourself from yourself. There is very little spirituality in that. It is a high level of humanity. It's wonderful. But are you truly joyfully, perpetually accessing that higher zone in you? Must be these, uh, you know, so-called religious workers or whatever, or the 
you find there is there's good service, they mean well, but at the same time there is grimness. But we like, since we all the time want to invent heroes, so we, a time comes for many of these people become heroes. Suddenly you find lots of books written about them, and of course it goes in seasons, you know. Suddenly so-and-so, so-and-so in Africa he is a great being, and people will be trekking from here and there, and, a lot of it. Because we want to be reassured that there are beings who are truly living something. And until you discover, no, there's not quite. You see, you find all of that movement, this huge hospital in the middle of the Congo, Albert Schweizer's, whatever. Go there and stay for a year, and then you will find out. Not my, I mean, it's historical, but. <laughs> and it was hysterical. Watch out. There is a huge difference between wanting to appear as a religious person, as relig responsible, as pious, than naturally you can't do anything unless it is in reference to your own soul. Then you know that there will be no regret, no going back and forth in time. It's easy earlier on in your journey, but the time may come that you're, you don't know whether it is your ego spirit or whether it is truly your own soul. And there, the Lipta's test is, would you have any regrets? Would you have any sorrow? Would you have any fear? Or would you repeat the same thing if you were put in that position again? That's honesty, you see. And Allah is all forgiving. Allah is the source of all renewals. But, you know, you, again, presence. If you're present at any time, then you don't have this self-conscious presence. That's an obstacle. You're just present. You know. Enough, not enough. Time is up, time. You know, but you are scared of that knowledge. So you say, how would I know? Well, come to that point and you'll know. But no, I want an assurance now because we've been taught in this world. What is B plan? What is C plan? What is insurance upon insurance? Do the little you can and see wonderment. It may be for others. Maybe that somebody will notice that you really need to, to, to be helped. In my own life, I had so many occasions where I embarked on something. Now, I wasn't able to properly organize it, administrate it. Then suddenly somebody comes, says, really, you're not, you know, there's a lot of chaos here. I say, yes, of course, please come and help. <laughs> and really, it's wonderful. And it's healing for them. You're not the only one. Other people may find the reason. They say, no, I really felt sorry for these people. They're wasting. Quite right, please come and help. Really? So, it's not you. There are so many other souls in this journey, you know, moving on towards their des <coughs> destiny and their perfection. Wonder upon wonder upon wonder upon wonder, joy upon joy upon joy. And you know, you can take this to your workplace. This business of dunya and deen, and it's all, it's all religious stuff. It's all madrasa stuff. It's not real. It's not separable. Take it to your workplace. See everybody else is destitute. Everybody is there for whatever nefsi purpose. So you treat, be less nefsi. You'll be amazed. Really. If you are not too ambitious or too, you will end up being regarded as the best. Because they know you're, you're fair, you're correct, you're, your thoughts and your conclusions are not ordinary. They are super. Without you attempting, without you, you, you are who you are. You know. Start as being the doorkeeper. I tell you, they will beg you in time to become the CEO. And you know that this is the worst position to be in, so <laughs> you apologize. <laughs> really? 
Say, look, I was very happy as a doorman. I watched everybody with their baggage. And in my younger days, going in India and Pakistan, I often thought, what would be the best position ever if I am to live there? It was the Chokidar, <laughs> in, especially in Pakistan. The Chokidar sees the dramas of the family. They're running, coming and backing around, especially the ladies. They're in and out from seamstresses because, you know, those weddings they have, you need to have at least six, seven different dresses to change. Come to South Africa with the Indian Muslims there and you, you understand what I'm talking about, you know. Their cupboards are full of useless clothes, <laughs> usually saris. As for their shoes galore, I think you can have 10 shoe shops from every house. It's like that. So I wondered, what would I do? Chokidar. So one day this Chokidar sees everybody is running frantically in the house. Up and down and boxes being thrown down. They come to the garden. So he asked one of the young girls, so what is it? He said, well, my mother's one earring is missing. It was a diamond earring. It is this and that, and it's missing. For five days, the entire household is in trauma because one earring. So he asked her, how often does she wear it? No, she doesn't wear it. It's dangerous because, you know, they can pull it off. You know, no, she wears a fake one, not that one. <laughs> so my Chokidar has the best of lives. And he writes about all of these events and things and that. So be the chokidar of your own house, <laughs> and you will, you, will, you will be really in the most wonderful journey, no matter what the job is. If you really, truly do it as for your own evolvement towards the highest in you, you will be amazed. You will be amazed. Small little menial tasks become special, become magnificent. There will be potency in them. Enough, Shahrazad. <laughs> <laughs>